Welcome to Vape Fiend's comprehensive deep dive into vaping. We're going to be examining every aspect of vaping from the basics like what is vaping through to how to find the right vape for you, how to get the most out of your vape and things like dosage control and even some great bits of pro information that'll help even the most seasoned vapor among you. This video is aimed at those just getting started, but there are loads of useful nuggets of information that are handy for everyone to know. We've time-coded this video according to the different topics that are covered. So you can see those in the description below this video on YouTube. So if there's something you're not interested in, you can skip to the next section or write to any subject that catches your eye. First of all, what is a herb vape? Simply put, it's a device that heats herbal material to a point below combustion so that the vaporized oils can be inhaled. They can be portable or desktop, which usually means mains powered. They are different from e-cigarettes, which are designed to evaporate liquids containing nicotine. Dry herb vapes are the vapes we're talking about, and they're specifically designed to extract the active oils present in herbal matter in the form of vapor. So what is vapor? Vapor is the oils present in the herbal material heated so that they evaporate and form a cloud, a bit like steam. It's not steam, there's no water present, it's just vaporized oils, and you can inhale that vapor, and it will then be absorbed into your bloodstream to produce an aromatherapeutic, or in some cases, a medical effect. It doesn't smell as much as smoke, and the smell doesn't linger as much or permeate fabrics in the same way but there is absolutely a noticeable smell. If you're vaping outside, it dissipates pretty quickly, but vaping indoors will leave a bit of an odor, especially if you've got windows closed. If you think about smoke and vapor, um, there is one major difference. Essentially, smoke is the vaporized particles from the herbal material that you're inhaling, but it also includes a load of other nasty compounds as well like carbon monoxide, carcinogens basically, that are quite harmful for you to inhale and have in your lungs. If you look at what's left after smoking, it's ash. It's just a very basic ash that is left after you burn something. Everything else is going straight into your lungs. Whereas if you look at the material after you've vaped some herb in a dry herb vaporizer, it still holds pretty much the same structure as the herb when you put it in. It's just really dried out. You've taken all the oils out of it, but you're keeping the carbon and other nasty kind of components that would be totally evaporated and turned into smoke when smoking. You're keeping that in the herbal matter and you're discarding it at the end of use. So vaping is safer than smoking. It doesn't include those carcinogens that smoking does. So when you're using a dry herb vaporizer, you're inhaling those evaporated oils so that they can be absorbed into your bloodstream and deliver their aromatherapeutic effects. When you're selecting a dry herb vaporizer, there are a few different things that you'll be taking into account. There's the reason you're taking up vaping in the first place, which might be cutting down on smoking, for example. There's the location where you'll be doing most of your vaping. Also, the level of dosage that you'll need, as well as things like price and the features offered by different vaporizers. Let's start with some use cases or applications. One of the most popular reasons that people start vaping is because they want to give up smoking. Dry herb vapes are not smoking cessation aids in that they usually can't be used with nicotine or tobacco, but many people do use them as a smoking alternative, and many have successfully given up smoking by using dry herb vapes as smoking replacement. In my experience, the most successful vapes for these people are vapes that produce a lot of thick, dense vapor 
because it's most similar to smoking. Vapes like the Mighty, Tiny Mite, or Flower Pot, or perhaps the Dynavap range. Another use case is for medical cannabis users under prescription. These can quite often be total newcomers to smoking cannabis and to vaping, to cannabis in general, or they can actually be habitual cannabis users who are now transitioning away from smoking and into vaping because that's what the doctor recommends. Habitual cannabis smokers have the same expectations as someone transitioning from smoking. They'll want that thick, harsh, smoke-like vapor that I just mentioned. If a patient is entirely new to medical cannabis and has never smoked, they'll probably prefer slightly lighter, smoother, and more flavorful vapor, such as that produced by the Sapphire, Arisa Solo 2 or Argo. Some users are just looking for another option alongside smoking, a different way to consume their herbs. Some smokers want to keep smoking but also want to add vaping into their regime. Personally, I'd always recommend giving up smoking and switching to vaping only partly because of the health implications of smoking, which are pretty much all bad, but also because if you're smoking regularly, you're going to find vaping kind of unsatisfying. The vapor feels thin compared to smoke. It's almost like you're not inhaling anything at all. And it can really take some time to get used to. If you keep smoking alongside vaping, you'll never really get used to vaping. Every time you go back to vaping after you've smoked, you'll feel like nothing's happening, like you're not really inhaling anything. And another reason that happens is because the effects from vaping don't come on as quickly as the effects from smoking. Smoking produces almost instantaneous effects, partly because of the kind of oxygen starvation that goes on when you're inhaling smoke. Whereas when you vape, the effects don't come on for about 10 minutes. Um, so again, if you keep going back to smoking, you're not allowing yourself time to adjust to vaping. But if you insist on smoking and vaping, then you're going to need a pretty hard hitting vape. Something like a mighty tiny mite flower pot or titanium and you'll also be drawn to higher temperature settings on your vape. Whereas if you're not smoking at all, you'll be able to appreciate the better flavor and fresher feeling effects of vaping at lower temperatures. Compared to smoking, vaping is more economical. If you load 0.3 grams of herb into a vape, that can last you two or three 10 minute sessions in the vape. Whereas if you smoke the same amount, it's going to be gone in 10 minutes or less. So vaping is more economical than smoking. You can absolutely get at least twice as much use out of the same amount of herb if you're using a dry herb vaporizer compared to if you're smoking. So that's another great reason to switch to vaping. You'll get the same effects, some say even stronger effects, longer lasting effects from a vaporizer once you're used to it, once you've made that transition away from smoking as you would from smoking the same amount of herb. What's more, when you're done vaping, there will always be some goodness left in the spent herb and that can actually be used in baking. When you're considering what type of vaporizer you want to get, you should think about where are you going to be doing most of your vaping? Are you going to be doing it at home indoors? Are you going to be doing it while you're walking your dog or taking a walk around the neighborhood? Are you going to be going to the park? Are you Are going to be going to concerts and expecting to be able to vape outdoors in a public place? you want to be able to take your vape on holiday with you, round to your friend's house? All these things are important things to consider. Most desktop vapes are mains powered, so they're ideally suited for use in one place in your home. So if you're going to be vaping a lot throughout the day, it's well worth investing in a mains unit. Home portables 
are bigger portable vaporizers still designed for use at home, like the Minivap or the Tafé Bowl. And these are perfect for indoor and outdoor home use. They usually have slightly bigger batteries than portable vaporizers. Again, it's worth bearing in mind how many times a day you're likely to be vaping and whether the batteries will keep up with you. Some vapes will even allow you to use them while they're charging, but even this will eventually drain the battery as they usually don't charge as fast as you vape. Portables are smaller devices, usually pocket friendly, that you can take out on a hike or for a day at the beach or even to a concert or festival. Smaller portable vapes are often not quite as powerful as desktop vapes, but they're handy to have for when you need them. And that's one reason why many vapors will end up having more than one vape for different occasions. Think of it like a kind of toolkit. Sometimes you'll need a vape to take out to a concert. Sometimes you'll need a vape for chilling in your favorite armchair. Sometimes you'll need a vape to take to the park. So there's a few different types of vaporization process that different vapes produce. Conduction, and convection are the most common. You'll also hear about hybrid and sometimes even induction. Conduction vapes work a bit like a frying pan or a saucepan. Your herbs are in contact with a heat plate of some kind and the heat is conducted directly into the herb matter for several minutes during which time you're inhaling the vapor that is produced. Flavor will be very good for the first couple of minutes but then it'll start to get a bit toasty as time goes on. But the vapor will still be effective even as the flavor lessens. If you stop inhaling, but leave the vape on, the herb will continue to be cooked. And that can be kind of wasteful. Convection vapes are different. They pass heated air over and through your herbs and it's the hot air that evaporates the oils rather than connection to a heat source of some kind. Often that means the flavor of the vapor lasts a bit longer. They're often what's called heat on demand vaporizers, meaning that the herbs are only heated as you inhale. When you stop inhaling, the heat stops, which makes it more efficient. You could take just one hit then come back to the vape hours later and the flavor is still going to be pretty great because the herb hasn't been cooking all the time you've been away. The problem with convection vapes can be that battery life can be fairly short with convection vapes because they need a hotter element to heat up the air every time you inhale. Hybrid vapes use a combination of conduction and convection. So they get the fast heating initially that conduction vapes offer and some of that intense initial flavor, but they also get the longer lasting effects that convection vapes offer and sometimes some of the longer lasting flavor as well. In reality, all vapes are kind of hybrid vapes to some extent because conduction vapes often allow a little bit of convection of the herb that's in the chamber and convection Vapes can often have, you know, metal chambers or some form of conductive heat transmitted to the herbs in your bowl as the vape itself warms up. Um, but, you know, these terms are just a sort of guide to give you an understanding of what kind of hits you're going to be getting from your vape. You might also hear the term induction. Induction is basically just a type of conduction. Uh, uses magnetism and it's not always successful with dry herb vapes to be honest. Conduction and convection give similar end results in terms of desired effect. It can also be easier to reach the highest range of temperatures with conduction vapes due to their direct contact style heating. But this method can often be slightly less efficient because of this, because the herb is always in contact with the heat and there's always going to be some vapor that escapes.
Storz and Bickle, one of the most trusted names in vaporizer manufacturing, employ a hybrid heating style in all of their vapes in order to benefit from both styles of vaporization at the same time. And we've had a couple of questions from Discord users about conduction versus convection. One about how the different types of vaporization affect the onset of the actual vaporization experience. Uh, conduction and convection both give kind of similar end results in terms of desired effects, although it can sometimes be easier to reach the highest ranges of temperatures with conduction vapes because they've got that direct contact style heating. But this method can sometimes be less efficient for exactly the same reason. The herbs are directly in contact with that heat source. Then every time you're not taking a hit, there's always going to be some vapor that escapes. Unlike with heat on demand vaporizers where the vapor is only produced when you're actually inhaling. But the problem with those heat on demand style vaporizers is they sometimes don't give you instantaneous effects with the first hit. If you think of a Mighty, which has hybrid heating, uh, it takes about a minute to heat up. But the first hit after that minute will be quite dense and smoky, quite a big cloud, because you've got the conductive effect of the metal bowl transmitting heat into your herbs. Whereas if you think of a convection heat on demand vape like the Tafe Bowl or the Firefly 2, sometimes you don't get the biggest, densest rips with the first or second hit. Sometimes you need to kind of heat up the herb in the bowl by taking a kind of a wispy hit at the beginning so that the second or third hit are a bit more optimal. We've also had a question about what is the best type of vape for a beginner. And there are really different types of beginners, so it's quite hard to answer. For someone who's never ever touched a vape and maybe isn't a smoker either, I'd probably recommend a conduction vape, something like the Sapphire. It's reliable, simple to use, and not expensive and most people will be able to get good quality hits from it without having to spend hours pouring through a user manual. For smokers trying to transition to vaping, I'd mention something a bit harder hitting like the Mighty. It's still really easy to use, really easy to get bigger hits, but it's a little bit more advanced than the Sapphire with its digital temperature control. And it has a nice clear display big simple buttons and really pumps out a lot of dense vapor. Perfect for smokers. I generally kind of think heat on demand and convection vapors are probably a little bit more advanced just because there's usually a little bit of technique to them. But if you're really interested in getting the best flavor out of your herbs and the longest lasting flavor and getting real efficiency out of your vaporizer, then a heat on demand vaporizer is worth having a look at. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at some of the different materials that are used in the manufacture of vaporizers, what they're used for, and what are some good things to look out for? What are some kind of things that you should maybe stay away from? There are some simple rules to remember. You could go into some real detail here, but I would say the first thing to be wary of is plastic. There are some vapes like the Crafty and Mighty that are made with really high quality heat safe plastics, but they are expensive. If you find a cheap vape and it's made of plastic, it's probably cheap plastic. Cheap plastic can off gas into your air path and it can break down and become brittle or melt over time. Sometimes it's better to spend a bit more initially and avoid health concerns or having to replace your vape so often further down the road. Vapes with metal bodies are usually a pretty safe bet. They're usually hard wearing. Again, plastic just doesn't seem to have a long life when used in the body of a vape. Vapes that last a long time generally have aluminium alloy or stainless steel bodies. 
but the problem with these is they can also get warm when they're in use. Sometimes nowadays you start to see wooden bodies on vapes, and that's because they are great at insulating against that heat transfer to the hands, and they're solid. If you use some wood butter or oil, you can also make them look really warm and nice. You should also think about what material the mouthpiece of your vape is made from. You want it to be made from an easily cleanable, non-porous material. Ceramic zirconia is great because it also has a kind of cooling effect. Also, glass is just excellent for flavor transfer. You will get silicone mouthpieces. That's good for hygiene. The flavor usually isn't quite so good with silicone. And then, of course, plastic mouthpieces. Again, it needs to be really high quality, heat safe plastic if it's going to last. Otherwise, you might find that you'll end up replacing your mouthpiece quite regularly. Your herb chamber and the material it's made of is also important. Glass and ceramic chambers are usually best for flavor preservation. You'll get really nice, rich flavor from these vapes. However, ceramic can be a little fragile, so you'll want to take care when cleaning. Make sure you don't scratch or scrub too hard. Metal chambers, on the other hand, usually can take quite a beating. They also heat up faster and can give great flavor at first, but then it starts to go a bit toasty. Some torch vapes have wooden chambers, which usually impart a bit of a woody flavor to your vape. It's a little bit like vaping in a sauna. One thing that you should really look out for is whether your vape has an isolated air path. In other words, is the hot air path separate from the electronics? If it's not, you could end up with a strange metallic taste affecting your vapor. Most quality vapes nowadays have isolated air paths, but it's good to check. Also, what is the heat element itself made from, and is that going to affect the flavor of your vapor? If it's a ceramic heat element, or an element that's encased in ceramic or embedded in ceramic, like the Firefly 2 or the Sapphire or the Spirit, the flavor won't be adversely affected. You usually get really good flavor from those kinds of ceramic elements. Similarly, if the heater is covered by glass, you get that with the Vapexale Evo or the Silver Surfer or the De Buddha. And with those, you really don't get any issues with flavor at all. Glass often gives you the most incredibly clean flavor you could imagine. But if your heat element is an exposed nichrome coil, for example, that is probably going to affect the flavor. You will get that slightly metallic tinge to it. Okay, let's talk about cost. Vapes can cost anything from 20 quid up to 600 pounds or more. But in reality, you're not gonna get a really good quality vaporizer for less than about 59 pounds. That's the cost of the Sapphire. It's really well built, really simple to use, gives pretty good flavor, and it's really reasonably priced at only 59 pounds. It's our pick for dry herb vapors on a budget, but the Dynavap range that starts at around 63 pounds are also pretty reasonable if you're interested in torch powered or battery free vaping. It's a little bit different to electronic vaping, but you can get a really satisfying hits from these nifty little things. There's also the Spirit, which is slightly more featured than the Sapphire with the digital temperature control, swappable battery, um, and still very reasonable at 109 pounds. It also offers a higher temperature range than the Sapphire. If you want a big hitter, the price is gonna be a bit higher. With the Crafty or Crafty Plus at 229 pounds, the Mighty clocking in at 257 pounds, and the Taffe Bowl at 323 pounds. It's more of a home portable, the Taffe Bowl, but it really delivers some excellent, tasty, powerful rips. You can get some really good deals on desktops. This is the Ariza V Tower. It's only 99 pounds, and actually it's a really powerful desktop. 
There's also this slightly better improved version, the Extreme Q, which features a fan so that you can inflate balloons and also pump the vapor straight into your mouth. That's slightly more expensive at £129. They're both really capable of delivering really big hits. The De Buddha at £135 is also a really big hitter at a great price. The Volcano Vaporizer is a more premium option. It's kind of the gold standard for desktop vaporizers. It's £319 for the classic balloon inflating version. When I talk about balloon inflating vapes, they're essentially a sort of plastic bag with a valve on. You inflate this bag full of vapor and then you can take the bag away from the vaporizer and inhale it at your leisure. The newer Volcano Hybrid is slightly more expensive, well, quite a bit more expensive, really. That's £519, and that includes a whip option, like a long sort of plastic tube that you can inhale through, and digital temperature control as well. Both the Volcano models can be very, very high dosage vapes if you want them to be. Also among the hardest hitters are the Titanium at £260 and the Flower Pot is a little bit more in the sort of £300 to £500 range depending on the kit that you go for. They're both really heavy hitters. Both offer you the option of dabbing concentrates at the same time as vaping your flowers. That's a whole different ballpark and a lot of vaporizers offer it, but the uh, Titanium and the flower pot actually allow you to do both at the same time. They're really heavy hitters, but they also work well with small dosage too. Okay, now let's think about how much you're going to be vaping and what kind of dosage you will need. Some vapors like to take lots of small doses regularly, while others prefer to take higher doses less frequently. One thing to bear in mind is how much temperature affects dosage when vaping. You can vape at low temperatures like 180 Celsius, which is around 356 Fahrenheit. And if you do that, you get a lighter, more cerebral, kind of a daytime effect. It doesn't kind of cloud your thought processes too much. Or you can vape at higher temperatures, say 220 Celsius, which is about 428 Fahrenheit. And that will give you a sleepier, narcotic and more pain relieving effect. Effect. Or you can go somewhere in between. This is because different compounds in the herb evaporate at different temperatures. So if you really need a high dosage insomnia curing and pain relieving effects, make sure your choice of vaporizer goes to the higher end of the temperature range. The highest temperatures you can get from a dry herb vape will be around 240 Celsius or 464 Fahrenheit, which the spirit, the taffet bowl, and just about all torch powered and desktop vapes can offer. But it's not only temperature that affects the dosage. Sometimes it's a combination of things like bowl size, in other words, how much herb you can load into the vape in one go, and also the level of draw restriction, which can limit the volume of vapor that you can consume in any one session. For example, the Ariza Solo. This is the Solo 2 here. It's a really great vape. It gives you incredible flavor thanks to the all glass mouthpiece and pathway. And it's really efficient, but I wouldn't really call it a hard hitter. It won't really satisfy those who need a high dose in a short amount of time. It often won't satisfy those who are moving away from smoking either. On the other hand, the Mighty is a big hitting vape and it can actually sometimes be a bit much for low dosage users, especially on the higher temperatures. Some devices have dosing capsules like the Crafty and the Mighty. These allow you to standardize your dosage. You can even use weighing scales to weigh out the precise dosage 
per capsule. Some devices allow you to save some of your bowl for later. So you don't have to use it up all in one session. Heat on demand vapes like the Firefly 2 Plus here or the Taffe Bowl only heat the herb when you're actually inhaling. So when you're done, the rest of the herb isn't being wasted. It'll just stay there in exactly the same state until you come back to it and inhale later. And then you can get conduction vapes like the Arisa portables, like the Solo here. Now, with this design, you can actually pull the mouthpiece and the herb chamber, which is part of the mouthpiece, away from the heat source. So you could take a few hits, take the mouthpiece off, you can even cap it with a little silicone cap that comes with the unit and come back to it later. It's quite an efficient way of vaping and it's a little bit less battery draining and slightly more reasonably priced than some of the heat on demand vaporizers. Some vapes work well with small loads like the Vape XL Evo or the Tafe Bowl. Some work with both uh, small and large loads like the Sapphire, the Spirit, the Volcano, the Flower Pot and the Titanium. Some work better with a fully packed bowl like the Firefly 2, the Pax or the Ferner. And some have an adjustable bowl like the Dynavap 2021M. Generally, with portable vapes, there can be a trade-off between flavor and power, with more flavor-oriented vapes not usually giving the biggest, smokiest hits. In the best flavor camp are the Ariser portable vapes, so that's the Solo, the Solo 2, the Air 2, and the Argo. In the middle ground, getting both flavor and big dense hits are vapes like the Sapphire, the Spirit and the Taffe Bowl. And going for full on smoky, dense ribs, but not quite as tasty, are vapes like the Crafty Plus, the Mighty and the Tiny Mite. Desktop vapes can often manage both great flavor and great big hits, particularly the Vape XL Evo and the Extreme Q and V Tower. Now we're going to talk a bit about vaping techniques. And there are so many different types of vapes, and all of them have slightly different styles of use. Sometimes it's good to know a bit about what technique is involved in using your vape because some people aren't going to be happy with some techniques and some people prefer other types of techniques. Uh, when I'm talking about techniques, I'm talking about actually the, literally the way you inhale from your vaporizer, the way you absorb that vapor and how to get the best effects from it. The most common type of vaping technique is the one best suited to conduction portable vapes with enclosed chambers. So that's vapes like the Sapphire, the Mighty, the Fury Edge and vapes like that. You wait for the chamber to heat fully and then just take long, slow draws, leaving about 30 seconds between each hit. The Air and the Argo are a little bit different. They are conduction vapes, but because of this draw restriction involved in them, uh, it's not so easy to take a, a big kind of lungful of vapor. With those vapes, it's best to use what I call yogic breathing. Um, it means you're not straining while inhaling. You're essentially using your diaphragm to do the inhaling for you. So you just focus on your belly rising as you inhale. And when you're totally full of vapor, you take the mouthpiece out of your mouth and slowly exhale and then go back in for the next hit. You can use exactly the same technique with heat on demand convection vapes like the Firefly 2 Plus or the Taffe Bowl. With these, you also really need to make sure you're inhaling for around 10 seconds to get the best hits. There's a bit of variation between different vapes on this. The Taffe Bowl gives best results with six second draws. The Firefly 2 Plus and Vape XL Evo give better results with 
15 second draws. Big hitters like the Tiny Mite, Titanium or Volcano are pretty simple. You can take long draws, slow draws, fast draws, whatever you do, you're going to get pretty big hits. Vaping through water is also worth mentioning. You can get water bubblers or um, water tools that can be used with pretty much any vaporizer on the market. There's only a few that don't allow you to rig up a water tool in some way. And those are vapes like the Firefly 2 Plus and the Tafe Bowl. They have slightly different shaped mouthpieces that don't really allow for a water adapter. But other vaporizers like the Crafty, the Mighty, the Sapphire, the Spirit, the Ariser vaporizers, even desktops like the Titanium. The Flower Pot is actually designed for use with water bubblers. Same with the Vapexel Evo. If you pass your vapor through water, it can cool the vapor and moisture condition it. It's actually bubbling the vapor particles through water, cooling them down so that you can inhale more without irritating yourself. You don't get the same dry throat. You can take a really big lung full of vapor and you can use higher temperatures on your vaporizer as well without finding it too hot or harsh. You can get water vape kits for the Crafty and Mighty, the Pax and Ariser portable vapes, and many others have water pipe adapters that allow you to rig them up with either tabletop bubblers or vertical water tools. One thing I haven't mentioned is grinding. And this is something you are gonna need to do for pretty much every vaporizer. I'm talking about actually grinding the herbal material into smaller particles, breaking it apart, but not powdering it. You want them to be kind of fluffy. Essentially what you're doing is you're exposing more surface area to the heat produced by your vaporizer. So you get a more efficient vaporization of the oils within the herbal material and more evenly vaped um, herbal matter. It means you're vaping more efficiently. You're gonna get a bit more flavor as well. Um, and there are so many different types of vaporizers available on the market. Uh, you can use a cheap plastic grinder. For years, that's what I did. They'll cost you around five pounds or sometimes less. It's a really economical way to vape. They're a great place to start, but it's worth thinking about how long they last. They do not last forever. The grinding action can actually mean that over time you're actually grinding small parts of the plastic along with your herb. You can now get pretty nice zero plastic or hemp plastic grinders, but if you're gonna be vaping a lot, it's probably worth getting a good grinder. Vapors like to use three-part grinders because they collect the herb without sifting out the crystals. The Santa Cruz Shredder line are very popular. The teeth are nicely designed for a fluffy grind, which is perfect for most vapes. Some modern grinders avoid screw threadings as these can get locked with sticky residue and can also shave off little metal filings over time, which could get into your herbs. The puck grinder is a great example of this. One of our Discord users asked the question, what kind of grind is most effective? Fine, fluffy, coarse? It's true, there's different types of grinders with different kinds of teeth. The plastic grinders often have very sharp, sort of pointy shark tooth style teeth, and they're kind of designed to really powder your herb if you really go for it. Or you can just take one twist in a grinder and keep it kind of fluffy. And then grinders like the Santa Cruz Shredder, as I mentioned, they're more designed to keep that kind of fluff in your grind. Some vapes may even develop problems over time if you grind too finely, as the tiny herbal dust can clog up the holes in the bottom of your chamber and it can cause overheating. Another important point is that if you overfill your chamber, it can have a negative effect on vapor production or vapor quality. As a general rule, I'd fill the chamber loosely to the brim. Don't pack it down. But some vapes like the Tafe Bowl or Vapex Evo work much better if the bowl is only half full and then other vapes like the packs work better if you really do 
pat down the chamber a little bit. So make sure you do a bit of research and find out what's best for the vaporizer you're using. Okay, so now we're gonna go through a few different vaporizers just in a bit of a rapid fire round to get you up to speed with what different kind of features they offer and how they are to use. We're gonna start with portable conduction vapes and we're gonna start with my sort of standard recommendations to people who are looking to get started with dry herb vaping. And so my number one recommendation is the Sapphire. That's because of the price more than anything, but also because it's a great vaporizer at that price. At the time of filming, it's 59 pounds here in the United Kingdom. You can also often get bundle deals that throw in some accessories and stuff, or sometimes like a 10 pound off coupon. The Sapphire is a really nicely made little portable conduction vaporizer. It's got five preset temperature settings. It's got a integrated battery, charges by micro USB, and it's got a ceramic chamber, which is really good for flavor, especially with conduction vaporizers. It doesn't tend to go quite as toasty as some of the conduction vapes with a metal chamber. Another really nice feature about it is the ceramic zirconia mouthpiece and ceramic mouthpiece filter. And that cools down the vapor as you're inhaling it, but it also keeps the heat in the chamber. So it means it's wasting less battery power to keep the herb at the right temperature for vaporization. Heats up quite quickly. As you can see, I just turned it on with nothing in there getting a little bit of vapor coming off from the little crumbs and residue that are left there in the bottom. And you get like five minute um, vaping sessions um, at, before it turns itself off, but it's really easy to just turn it back on again. The battery lasts for about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on what temperature setting you're using it for. It's a nice solid metal bodied vape, this perfect shape and size for putting in your pocket. I kind of recommend it as a backup vape, even if it's not your first vape, because it's just handy to have a little pocket vape like this to carry around. Okay, similar, very, very similar, in fact, is the Spirit, um, which is made by the same brand. It's the Storm brand of vaporizers. Um, very similar in shape and size to the Sapphire, as you can see. It's got a couple of extra features that uh, the Sapphire doesn't have, and that pushes it into the slightly higher price bracket, £109. Um, although, like the Sapphire, you can often get some bundle deals and discounts, especially around Black Friday and that kind of thing. This has a swappable battery, unlike the Sapphire, which means that you can have spare batteries around with you. Obviously, you'd have to keep them in a battery case because they're just 18650 batteries like this, so you don't want to get them dented or anything. Uh, but that's a really cool added feature. It means if you've got like two or three charged batteries, you're doubling or tripling your vaping time. It's also got a digital temperature display, so that means you can choose the temperature you want precisely down to the degree Celsius and it goes all the way up to 240 Celsius, which is about 20 degrees higher than the Sapphire. So it's great if you want to be vaping concentrates or resins, or if you just want to go for the higher end of the spectrum with your dry herbs. Got the same ceramic zirconia mouthpiece, the same ceramic chamber, the same really good build quality, and just a really nice, reliable, quite low cost conduction vaporizer. Okay, moving on with my sort of go-to recommendations for people. It's the Crafty and the Mighty. I usually recommend the Mighty over the Crafty, uh, although they are extremely similar vaporizers. But I'll tell you why I like the Mighty a little bit more, although it's quite a bit bulkier than the Crafty, which is now the Crafty Plus, a slightly improved version. And the Mighty Plus, I understand, is just around the corner, so it might actually be out by the time you're watching this. The Plus basically means it's got slight improvement in the battery life and some other slight improvements, slightly faster heat up time and stuff. But essentially, it's the same design of vaporizer. So the Mighty is a conduction convection hybrid. So it heats up really quickly. You get really nice um, flavor from it quite quickly. Um, and it also offers a bit of convection. So you are getting uh, slightly evenly, slightly more evenly vaping of the herbs in your chamber. 
and um, you know nice big clouds without too long a draw time it's got a metal chamber um, but it's you know doesn't seem to affect the flavor too badly certainly at first as as time goes on when you're vaping a bowl the flavor does go a bit toasty a bit popcorny what I really love about the Mighty is how simple it is to use. It's got these nice big buttons on the front. It's got this clear display here. Shows you the temperature you've chosen, which I've chosen 210, the temperature that it's currently at, and the uh, battery life on the bottom there. You get about an hour and a half's vaping time from a full charge on the Mighty. And it's really easy to get great results. You just get really, really big hits, big smoky rips of vapor with the Mighty. Uh, it's also designed with medical patients in mind. There's a medically specific version of the Mighty available called the Mighty Medic, which has gone through all the medical trials and stuff in order to make it an actually medical device. Um, it's just a great vaporizer, quite pricey, but it's made by the market leaders in the field, Storz and Bickle, the makers of the Volcano. So it's really reliable and nobody I know has ever regretted buying a Mighty, to be honest. The smaller cousin of the Mighty is the Crafty Plus. And, you know, looking at it, you'd think, why, why is he not recommending this one? It's smaller. It's like a little bit more discreet. And yeah, in many ways, it's just as good as the Mighty. It has the same kind of chamber, the same kind of heating system, same hybrid convection conduction method of operation, a very similar sort of cooling unit to the Mighty, which cools the vapor down as you inhale it. Um, the one downside to the Crafty, I would say, is it's got half the battery life of the Mighty. So you're looking at about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what the temperature setting is that you've chosen. Also, it doesn't have that nice, easy control on the unit itself. It doesn't have this lovely big display of these two up and down buttons. It's got one button on the side, which is, allows you to select one sort of primary choice of temperature setting, and then to double press it for a boost mode. All the other controls are relegated to a smartphone app, a Bluetooth app. And on the Bluetooth app, you can absolutely select a precise temperature setting, it goes up to 210 Celsius, just like the Mighty. But some people really don't like the idea of having to use your phone to dial in a, a specific temperature setting if you want to. I like having controls on the device. It's just how I am. And the kind of limited controls that you get with the Crafty and Crafty Plus, uh, you know, it puts me off slightly. Also, the fact that it's half the battery life. So even though it's really cool and small, I kind of find it a little bit frustrating to use because you end up having to charge it more frequently than you do the Mighty. It's still great vaporizer, great big smoky hits, good flavor, uh, heats up nice and quickly, as you can see. Um, the one downside to both of these that, that is worth bearing in mind is that it can be a little bit laborious to clean them. Um, and that's because of the cooling unit set up in these. Um, you have to kind of take apart the top section of the vaporizer here relatively regularly because you get a load of sticky residue traps in these little channels here and if you let that build up too much it can be really really difficult to clean so just bear that in mind if you keep on top of it and clean it like every couple of days or something then it's not too big of a deal okay now we're moving on to the ariser portables which are another really respected brand of portable vaporizers they work quite differently to the other portable dry herb vapes that are out there and the main reason for that is the glass mouthpieces and glass herb chambers. It's quite unique actually in dry herb vaping, this particular design. You get a, a range of different types of mouthpieces. This is the curved aroma tube as they call them. And as you can see, it's got a herb chamber actually built in to the bottom end of the mouthpiece itself. So you can load herb straight into that. You can actually, with the Ariser portables, load herb in without even grinding it. They seem to work really well 
whether you grind or don't grind, which is a plus for a lot of people. So you're loading the herb into this little chamber here, and then that goes straight in to the vaporizer there. Uh, so the herb remains in the mouthpiece, and that offers a cool feature that a lot of dry herb conduction vaporizers don't have, which is that when you've had a few hits, if you haven't finished your bowl, so to speak, you can remove it from the heat. And the vapes all come with these little rubber caps now so that you can actually cap the unused herb and come back to it later, put it back in your vape and take a few more hits. It's not quite as efficient as using a heat on demand convection vaporizer, but it's really close. And the great thing about all the glass involved is the flavor. You get this incredible fresh flavor when you're vaping through glass. It's like the combination of conduction heat and a glass pathway it really means you get these excellent hits. Really tasty, really flavorsome, and they're quite satisfying hits. There is one slight downside to the Ariza vaporizers, and that is that they usually have quite a bit of draw restriction compared to vapes like the Mighty and the Crafty. So it's about taking your time with the bowl. You take these sort of slow inhalations, focusing on your belly rising as you inhale, kind of similar to a convection vaporizer. Um, that flavor that's hitting me right now as I hit, that's just kind of really amazing. Um, but yeah, and, and you can take your time with it. It's quite a nice process to, to spend some time with your herbs, get that flavor in, get those clouds going. So uh, quite a pleasant way to vape. So this is the Solo 2. Um, it's probably the flagship of the portable vapes, I would say. Again, like the Mighty, it's got a nice big battery in there, double the battery life of a lot of smaller portable vaporizers. So you get about an hour and a half's vaping time on there. It's got a nice digital temperature setting mechanism. And you can also choose from several presets on there. Gives you quite a lot of customizability through the little interface here. You know, you can turn the beep on to let you know when it's reached temperature or when it's turning itself off. Or you can turn that off if you want to be more stealthy. Um, then there's the smaller version, which is the Air 2. Again, very similar. It's got the very similar um, chamber. In fact, you can interchange the mouthpieces between the different devices and use your mouthpieces from the Solo 2 in the Air 2. Again, it's got a digital temperature setting. This is a smaller device uh, with only one battery. So you're getting about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of vaping time with the Air 2, although they use slightly higher capacity batteries for the Air 2. So that kind of pushes the limits a bit more. You can probably get, you know, just about an hour or maybe even a bit more, depending on what temperature settings you're using. Um, and that is quite a nice sort of smaller, more pocket friendly version of the same kind of design. And then the most recent design is the Argo. And this, as you can see, is much smaller, much more pocket friendly. It's got this cool little sort of pop-up protective upper section. So this actually just pops up to protect the end of the glass. And this is one of the slight complaints that some people have about the Ariza vaporizers is that uh, the glass mouthpieces can be fragile. Obviously, if you drop that, if it falls out of the chamber and onto a hard surface, you can break that. And that's why when they brought out the Argo, they kind of built in this little protective housing around the mouthpiece there. It's got a very similar style of mouthpiece. This is smaller and narrower than the Solo 2 and Air 2 mouthpieces, but it's the same kind of design again, all glass with the chamber in the end there. And what's cool about the design of the Argo is because the mouthpiece chamber is right down at the bottom there, it is kind of protected in this little 
housing down there, it kind of keeps the heat in a little bit more than these designs of vaporizers where the upper end of the chamber is almost exposed to the elements. So you get a little bit more efficient heat production with the Argo. It means that with smaller amounts of herb, you actually get bigger clouds. So it's a little bit more satisfying, I'd say, the Argo, even though it's smaller. And I just love the size of it. You know, it's about the size of a small pack of cigarettes or something. You can pop that in any pocket. Like I sometimes carry it in my top pocket like that. And it's it's a really nice newer addition to the Ariser range. But they're all really great vaporizers. I don't think you can go wrong with Ariser. The one thing I would say is that some people who like really heavy dose, like big hitting, smoky, cloudy vapes, they might find these a little bit unsatisfying. Um, but if you're all about flavor and you don't mind kind of the, the lighter dosage, then these are really top end of the scale in terms of quality. So now we're going to talk about a few sort of also rands. These are vapes that are semi-popular, especially the Pax actually. It's a very, very popular conduction vaporizer, mainly because of the look of it and the branding, I think. It really attracts a lot of attention. It's also got great, like, reach. It's out there in so many different stores. Most vapes shops around the world, if they don't sell any other dry herb vapes, they'll probably sell the packs. You can even get it in department stores and stuff. It's a, a very reputable uh, brand, very well known. And the look of it is beautiful. It's very kind of sleek and stylish. Um, the reason I'm not recommending it as one of my top vapes is for two reasons, really. Number one, it's got a metal chamber which isn't the best for flavor. You get these nice tasty hits at very first, the first sort of one or two hits. And then as time goes on, kind of gets a bit of a drag, keep hitting this kind of smoky tasting, popcorny tasting bowl of herb. And the second thing I'm not really a fan of with the PAX vaporizers, and there's the PAX 2 and the PAX 3 are available at the moment, is the fact that all the vapor travels through this tiny little channel that goes through the middle of the device. And that gets really clogged up quite easily. It can get quite a pain to clean. You need to get pipe cleaners out and get it in there with some alcohol and do it. Again, if you do it regularly, it doesn't get too bad, but it's just one of those things I kind of feel like it's a bit of a design flaw, to be honest, but now it's, it's just part of the PAX design and, and PAX users love it they also love the simplicity of the design it's just controlled by one button at the top there you use that to go through the different temperature settings and uh, you just touch it here it's not even a visible button it's like the top of the mouthpiece here you just hold it down and press it in different ways to get different hits and the mouthpiece is like really quite secret it's just this little flat mouthpiece here this little gap at the side is where you inhale from so it's very discreet um, a lot of people really love it uh, for a lot of people it's their first vape i think in terms of the actual vaping experience kind of the size of hits you get the flavor you get it's not really one of the best certainly for the money you pay for the packs two and packs three I think there are better vapes out there. But in terms of discreteness, portability, you'd be really hard pressed to find something that fits as nicely as the PAX 2 and PAX 3 do in your pocket. Another really small, discreet one is the Da Vinci Micro. This is uh, quite a cool design, but unfortunately, it just doesn't really seem to hold up that well under long term use. Part of the reason for that is that it uses these really tiny batteries. It's like half of an 18650. It's called a 13. 650 i think something like that so it's a really small battery you don't get many hits out of it it does come in the uh, explorers kit which is the more advanced sort of kit with a spare battery in the package but even so that that then brings in the issue of having to carry a spare battery around with you and swap it around you know if you need a super small discrete vape and you only want to take one or two hits then maybe it's worth considering but, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of it. I find myself gravitating towards other vaporizers. But, you know, it's worth mentioning because it looks pretty cool and it's 
you know, in terms of one of the smallest vapes out there, it certainly fits the bill. And then there's the Lynx Gaia. Um, this is a conduction vape with a quartz herb chamber. Um, it's not bad for flavor, but there are better out there. What's cool about it is it's very solidly built. This nice solid metal chamber. It's got a nice temperature um, display there. Nice and easy to read, nice plus and minus buttons and a big power button there. Another cool feature is that it's got this little stirring tool kind of secretly tucked in to the bottom there, which it's always handy to have a stirring tool. So it is a nice idea that you get that built into the device. You actually get a very similar thing with the DaVinci Micro, this little stirring pick tucked away under the top there. Um, Again, you know, it's not my favorite of the uh, conduction vaporizers. It works fine. Uh, you get about an hour's worth of vaping on it and it looks nice and cool. But I think you could probably do better, to be honest, with other devices that are out there. OK, now we're going to move on to portable convection vapes. This is kind of my ballpark here. I really love portable convection vapes and one of my favorites is the Firefly 2 Plus. It's a really unusual vape so it's really not for everybody. I'm going to show you why I like it and, and why it's different. So it's a heat on demand convection vaporizer. That means you're only getting heat to your herbs as you're actually inhaling. So you load the herb into this glass bowl under the lid here and then you put your lid on the heat element is actually kind of underneath that glass bowl separated by some ceramic and stuff and when you engage it you push the buttons here this little light comes on it blinks a couple of times and when it's solid it's heated up enough for you to take a hit and you need to take like a 10-15 second hit while keeping the buttons pressed so you're getting a nice long inhalation of vapor, but because of the design of it, the vapor travels along this glass panel and back down into this hole at the bottom there. And this whole glass panel here is absorbing the heat from the vapor the whole time it's traveling. So by the time it comes out of this little plastic mouthpiece at the bottom, it's nice and cool and you can take a nice deep inhalation. So it's all glass until you get to the very last little plastic mouthpiece at the end here, which means excellent flavor. It's heat on demand, which means the herbs not being heated and toasted while you're not hitting it. It's also got a swappable battery, which is really cool. It means because the battery doesn't last super long because it is a heat on demand portable convection vape, uses quite a bit of power to heat up to those kinds of temperatures that are necessary to heat the air enough to vaporize the oils in your herb. So you can have spare batteries and have them charged up and just easily swap them out like a camera battery or something. It is a little bit unstealthy because you're holding it kind of like this, like a traditional pipe and kind of inhaling like this. And occasionally, if you want to get the best hits from it, you do have to open it up and stir the bowl a little bit. But if you're prepared to make do with that, and say, for example, you're mainly using it indoors and you're not bothered about stealth concerns or anything like that, the hits you get out of this little beauty are excellent. And nowadays, it's actually one of the more affordable heat on demand convection vaporizers out there. And when it first came out, People really didn't get on with it because it is so different to the conduction vapes. But once you've got that technique down of kind of holding the buttons, taking those long draws, stirring it occasionally, there's very few vapes that beat it, I'll be honest with you. And I still love taking it out, traveling and what have you, because it is giving you kind of plug-in style hits from a small portable device. So definitely worth checking that one out. A little bit more recently, the Tiny Mite has come into the fray and that has kind of blown a lot of other heat on demand portable vapes out of the water because it is a big hitter. So and it's also a little bit more simple to use, you know, 
behaves a little bit more like vaporizers that we are more accustomed to using. It's got this glass mouthpiece with metal cooling unit built into the mouthpiece. And what's cool about this is that you can move the cooling unit up or down to kind of change the size of the chamber. So you can have a small chamber, a large chamber, whatever you want. And uh, either way, the vapor is traveling through that cooling unit, which has got a load of little kind of metal bolts and things in there. And they absorb the heat from the vapor so that by the time it hits your mouth, it's nowhere near as harsh as it would be otherwise. And it would be pretty harsh because it's powered by a really powerful heat element, which is underneath here, protected by this wooden body, which does a great job of insulating against the heat. And it heats up incredibly quickly. So you can take these almost instantaneous hits and they are super powerful hits. Let me just show you what I mean. Hold down the button. After a couple of seconds, it buzzes to tell you it's at temperature. And you get these nice, tasty, big, powerful rips. As time goes on, it heats up more. You get even bigger hits. It's quite smoky at times and really satisfying. Um, the battery is an 18650 battery. It's swappable again, so that's always good, especially with these heat on demand convection vapes because they do use up battery quite quickly compared to conduction vapes. It's good to have the option of swapping the battery and having a spare one ready to go. And I do like the look of it. Some people kind of feel it's a little bit makeshift. I actually like the kind of wooden, almost handmade feel of it. It's got a little temperature dial on the bottom there. It just goes from one to 10. There's no precise temperature settings in there. And it's also got a sesh mode which is a little bit easier than the heat on demand mode because it just means it's on continuously and you can just keep hitting it. So if you are seshing, you don't want to keep holding down that button and waiting for the buzz before you start hitting it. Then you can use that sesh mode, something the Firefly 2 Plus doesn't have and it is um, a cool feature to have. It's a little bit hard to get hold of the Tiny Mic. There aren't many stores selling it. Your best bet is probably to go direct to the manufacturer and sometimes there's a bit of a waiting list. Um, but you know, if you're a, a kind of a vape geek who's really looking for something a little bit different, something a, a bit more of a heavy hitter, then I'd go with the Tiny Mic. It's, it's worth having a look at for sure. Okay, the last convection portable that we are looking at is the Lynx Eden. And this is probably something that I wouldn't recommend to the average vapor, to be honest with you. It is a pure convection vaporizer. It's got this lovely quartz bowl in there. It's quite a big bowl. It's relatively easy to use. It's just got one button on there. You just turn it on and then you've got the choice between four different temperature settings. It gives you this little display of flashing lights to tell you it's heating up and you can see the little element down there in the ceramic underneath the bowl glowing as it heats up. The downside I would say to the Lynx Eden is that it takes a while to get going. Even when it tells you it's at temperature after a minute or so of heating up, the first few hits you take are a little bit wispy. The flavor's great, but if you want those smoky hits like you get with the Firefly 2 Plus, you know, it takes a while for them to start coming, maybe about five minutes of use before you really start getting the best vapor production. So if you want quick hits, the Lynx Eden probably isn't the one for you. It's also had some issues where the battery will fail after a while and that kind of thing. It's really nicely made. The glass mouthpiece, the metal body, the quartz bowl, USB-C charging, it's got some great features. This nice little magnetic mouthpiece cap as well. Um, you know, there's a lot to like about it, but you've got to be prepared for kind of light hits. Uh, very tasty, but kind of wispy hits at first, going into a little bit more cloudy, but still never as big a hitter as the Tiny Mite or the Firefly 2 Plus. 
five, ten vapes are their own little category, and they're actually usually for concentrates or, or for e-cigs, actually. I mean, these mod batteries are quite common to see. Uh, most people have liquid tanks on top of them for nicotine e-liquids or other flavoured e-liquids. That's what they're designed for. But essentially, they're just powerful pocket-sized power sources. They usually take a couple of batteries. This one actually takes three, this Wismet one, but you can get these slightly smaller two battery mods. And if you're an e-cig vapor, an e-liquid vapor, you probably have one of these already. What you might not know is that you can screw on what are called dry herb tanks or dry herb 510 vapes and vape your dry herb through them. There are a lot of these some of them really aren't that good. A lot of the Chinese made conduction 510 tanks, you're not going to get great flavor from them. They often have a bit of that nichrome metallic tang of flavor to them. Their heating elements often don't last that long. They're made out of the kinds of thin wires that e-cigarette tanks are made out of. They're not really built to last. But there are a couple of US made dry herb tanks that I would recommend. Firstly, there's the Splinter. This is a wooden bodied, glass chambered, heat on demand, dry herb vaporizer. It's nicely made. It gives you nice, good hits, um, but they aren't particularly serviceable if something goes wrong. If the glass breaks, can't really replace the glass. And um, they're sometimes a bit hard to find. You know, there aren't many stores selling them. Um, but they do work well. You get good hits from them. A little bit easier to find is the stem pod. This has this sort of silicone rubber body and a metal kind of base. And if I pull the top off, you'll see that it's powered by these two replaceable coils. And that's cool because if the heat element does go, and these are quite hefty coils, so they are built to last. But if it does go, you can just unscrew this yourself and replace the coils yourself, which is cool. It's also got this little kind of airflow control at the bottom. So you can decide how smoky or how restrictive your hits are. Um, the one thing I do find is that the unit itself gets very hot and that can make the top of your mod get very hot. But you can get these little spaces that go on that kind of absorb some of that heat. So that's worth having. But it's a very similar design. Again, you put your herb in the bottom of the mouthpiece here, whack that in there and then just take your hits. It's heat on demand through the mod as you take nice big rips, quite tasty and quite uh, a cool option especially if you already own a mod you know this is more in the sort of tiny mite scale in terms of the size of the hits and and the smokiness of the hits so if you're really trying to give up smoking for example then you know something like the stem pod with a good powerful mod might be a good option Okay, now we're on to torch powered vaporizers. If you're just fed up with having to charge batteries, you do a lot of traveling, you might want to consider a torch powered vaporizer because you don't need any power sockets. You don't need any batteries or charging cables. All you need is a torch lighter or perhaps even a induction heater. Um, the most popular by far of the torch powered vaporizers is the Dynavap range. This here is a Dynavap M, but there's a huge range of different shapes and sizes, colors and types of Dynavap vaporizers. And they are so popular because they're so small and simple and yet they work so well. You've got a little cap here and underneath that is this herb chamber here. You load that up with your freshly ground herb pop the cap back on top and then you've got two choices. You can heat it in the traditional way with a small torch lighter or in fact any kind of heat source really. You could use a gas flame from a cooker, uh, campfire, a candle. Essentially all you need to do is direct heat to this little cap and when it reaches the right temperature it makes a little click from the top end of the cap a little sort of bimetal disc in there just pops to tell you that it's ready to hit from. It's a really clever, ingenious idea. I think the idea originally came from, there we go, there's that click. 
and then you just take a hit like this. It's really ingenious. Uh, yeah, the idea came from those little mechanical safety switches that are built into ovens so that if they hit a temperature that's way too hot, something just goes clunk and it just cuts the power and shuts down your oven until it cools down again. And the guy who invented the Dynavat just adapted that uh, and turned it into this incredible little dry herb vaporizer. It's so portable, it's, it's so easy to use. Like once you get the hang of that method of heating, you can get all kinds of different hits from it, like big hits, small hits. You can adjust the size of the bowl and take microdose hits from it. It clicks again to tell you that it's cooled back down and then you can go in for a second heat. And if you don't want to mess around with a lighter, then there are now induction heaters for these Dynavaps. This is one of the earliest kinds, the Lucid Customs Apollo 2. But there are again, a whole range of different induction heaters. These are battery powered or mains powered. You just pop your Dynavap in there and through the magic of induction, it transmits some heat straight through into the tip, clicks really quickly, there you go, and you can take your hit. This whole setup with an induction heater and a Dynavap, or maybe several Dynavaps, is great for group seshes. You know, in these post-pandemic times, uh, you, no one really wants to be sharing vaporizers in the way that they sometimes used to back in the old days. So you can have a base station induction heater and a bunch of Dynavaps. Everybody has their own one. Pop it into the middle to heat it, take your hit, and away you go. You're catering for a whole group of vapors there. It's a really neat solution to that problem of today and I just you know I'm just blown away by how effective these little vapes are you know, it's a great option for someone on a budget you can get a, a previous year's Dynavat M model for around 60 pounds 65 pounds nowadays the latest models can go from like 75 pounds to you know a couple of hundred pounds if you're getting a titanium omni and then you can get third party stems as well in all different types with different kind of airflow controls and all that kind of stuff, different colors. So it has a collector's side to it. You know, some people are really drawn in by the, the collecting aspect to these Dynavat vapes. So definitely that is a top, top tip. Check out the Dynavat vapes. You know, even if you feel like you're not really up for torch powered vaping, it's worth trying one. It's worth having one in your toolkit for when all the power has failed or you don't have any batteries or anything like that, you need to go away and you can only fit this in your pocket. You know, every vapor, every dry herb vapor, I think, should own a Dynavat. The only other torch-powered vape that I'm going to talk to you about now is, a, again, a range of vaporizers, and they are called the Sticky Bricks. So I've got a few of them here. This is the OG Brick. Now, this is I'm talking about this in the portable category, but it's, it's really more of a home portable or a desktop, I would say, because it's quite a huge, bulky thing. You're not going to be walking down the street <laughs> hitting this. And actually, you're probably not going to be walking down the street hitting any of the um, sticky bricks because of the way you use them. Again, you need a torch. For these kind of big ones, you can use great big blow torches, but even little mini kind of blow torch lighters like these, these little jet powered uh, lighters do work quite nicely. Um, and they're lovely pieces of equipment. They kind of clip together with magnets. There's a herb bowl down in the bottom there that clunks on there and the air path goes sort of through the bottom there and up into this great big mouthpiece on the OG brick for really big hits and you're really um, extracting everything that you can from the bowl in one hit when you're using an OG brick because of that huge mouthpiece and you know if you're using a big blowtorch you know, you can get some really bell ringing, powerful, heavy hitting vapes. Excellent for people who need high dosage. Excellent for people who are transitioning from smoking, that kind of thing. If you don't need something quite so big, then the runt 
is a great option. You know, basically a smaller version of the OG brick. It's got this little bent flame intake again. You can use a small torch or a bigger torch to just blast your heat in there and take your hits as you're going. And then the even smaller option, this is my personal favorite. This is great for taking away on traveling uh, expeditions, camping trips, that kind of thing. You Because it all clips away nicely with this nice little wooden cover. Again, it's very much the same design. You've got a herb bowl in the bottom there and a little flame intake here. So you can just blast your little jet lighter down there and take your hits from the mouthpiece at this end. Quite easy to use once you get the hang of it. A, a little while ago they were difficult because they didn't have a little restrictor disc built in, but now all the sticky bricks have a restrictor disc, which means it's much easier to get good hits without any combustion. Um, it's just a great design. It's a beautiful thing to own and, you know, a little bit heavier hitting than the Dynavap. So if you are into the kind of um, torch powered vaping, then you might want something a little bit harder hitting than the Dynavaps and the Sticky Brick range offers you that. Now we're going to talk about some home portables. So these are portable vaporizers. They operate from batteries, but they're a little bit too big to carry around in your pocket. To be honest, I kind of sometimes put the Mighty in the home portable category as well. As I said, the Sticky Brick, OG Brick, that's kind of a home portable, really. It's a bit too bulky to carry around in your pocket. Um, so, you know, the, the, the lines blur when you're talking about these categories a little bit. Um, but the two really home portable vaporizers that I want to talk about now are the Minivap and the Tafe Bowl. And these are definitely too big to carry around in your pocket and much more designed for use around and about your home. The cool thing about home portables is you can take them to the garden. You can even take them on a day out. You can, you know, take them to your friend's house and stuff. But they offer the kinds of power that you would usually only get from a mains powered vaporizer. And both of these are heat on demand convection vaporizers. Both of them are kind of at the pricier end of the spectrum, um, but both of them offer something a little bit different from the truly portable vaporizers. The Minivap, made in Europe, uh, it's actually a Spanish company. It is possible to get the Minivap as a mains powered home unit as well. It just has a little kind of base that clips onto the bottom here. I'll show you um, this little thing with a plug socket in it. So you plug that into the cable and this is in your, your um, mains powered uh, home vaporizer version of the Minivap, like so. Um, which you could just use plugged into the mains, or you can use it with this great big honking battery, which gives you almost endless hits and really, really tasty heat on demand convection hits. And then you pop it back on its little charging dock when you're not using it and keep the battery topped up so it's always ready to go for your next hit. Kind of feels like something designed from parallel universe or something, you know? It's very kind of stylish, but in a way that is totally different to every other vaporizer that's on the market. You've got these little baskets under the mouthpiece, which you fill up with herb and then clip them onto this sort of little pod underneath there. And then once it's heated up, which it uh, communicates to you by the sort of changing colored light on here when when the blinking stops and it goes solid then it's ready for you to take these hits now like the firefly 2 plus you need to take quite long hits let's say 10 to 15 seconds draw each time and rather like a lot of uh, heat on demand um, convection vaporizer a bit like the lynx eden actually it 
takes a while before you start getting the best hits. So you need to have this on for like 10 minutes before you start hitting from it. And that is a deal breaker for some people. Some people are like, what, 10 minutes? I want to take my hit immediately. I want it to be ready for me. But if you get into the rhythm of it and you're just vaping at home anyway, then, you know, you can turn it on, do something else for 10 minutes, come back and it's ready to go. You take these lovely hits from it. So a couple of different mouthpiece options. There's this big, long, wibbly one. There's also a shorter Teflon mouthpiece. And there's a few different color options as well. It's usually sold in black, but there's a silver. There are a few different color options too. It's worth having a look at, especially if you want like a lot of performance from your home portable vaporizer without running out of battery life. You know, it really compensates for the fact that heat on demand convection vaporizers use a lot of battery by giving you a lot of battery. So, you know, it is worth having if you're serious about your heat on demand convection home portable vaping. But if I'm totally honest, I kind of feel like the Tafe Bowl has eclipsed the Minivap as the one to own for heat on demand, home portable vaping. This is a magnificent portable vaporizer, um, kind of unusual in its design. It usually is sold with the drinkware attached, this kind of cup. I've got the glass one, but it's usually sold with a plastic one. But if you take that off, this is the, the vaporizer itself. And it's a very unusual design that gives unusually good performance. Let me show you how it works. You've got this little grinder here, a uh, specially designed grinder. It looks just like the, the other grinder I've got here that I'm using for all the other vaporizers. But with this one, unlike just grinding it up and then transferring the herb out of the grinder into your vaporizer. This one actually kind of loads your vaporizer for you. It's got these four little pots in the bottom. These are the actual herb chambers for the Tafe bowl. These are lovely ceramic pots, nice polished ceramic. You just pop that straight into the mouthpiece stem there and that clicks right into the base of the bowl. This is called the puck base unit. It's quite simple operation. You've got two buttons, one to choose the temperature from four settings. It goes from 185 roughly Celsius and then up by roughly 10 degrees to about 240 degrees. Um, and rather like the tiny mite that I showed you earlier, this one heats really, really quickly. So you push the button to start it heating up. And then when the lights go green, it's ready to hit. So there's none of that 10 minute wait that you get with the mini vat, but you still get those really, really satisfying, cloudy and yet really tasty hits. The length of the mouthpiece coupled with a little heat sink that's actually built into the mouthpiece mean that the flavor is really tasty, but the heat of the vapor is almost unnoticeable. And especially if you've got like a cool drink in here, then that's probably going to add a little bit of extra cooling to it. You know, maybe some ice or something in there if you're really going for it. The one downside that I've heard people talk about is the battery life. Um, now I get four of these pots fully vaped on one fully charged battery. And I do that by using it on setting two mostly, which is around 200 Celsius, something like that. Um, and that's good enough for me. If I was to use it on setting four exclusively, then I wouldn't get as many bowls out of one charged battery. And that I think is what people are talking about when they talk about the battery life. Um, but, you know, it charges pretty quickly, charges in about two hours, and you can actually use it while it's charging. Of course, you can't have the cup on it when you're doing that because the charging socket is right here. But you can just plug that in and be hitting it while it's charging. It doesn't charge as fast as you drain the battery, but it does mean the battery doesn't drain as quickly, if you see what I mean. This is really kind of my favorite vape at the moment. Uh, it's still kind of controversial because it is quite expensive. It's 
320 pounds or thereabouts. Um, but the hits you get from it are magnificent. It's kind of like a Firefly 2 crossed with something more powerful, like a Mighty or a Minivap, um, designed for use at home, but still portable enough that you can carry it around with you anywhere. It's quite lightweight. And I love that design, that whole feature of just grinding straight into your chambers and then putting the chamber into the vaporizer. It's just a masterstroke of vape engineering. It, it still astonishes me that nobody else thought of that before the guys at Tafé did. So I really heartily recommend the Tafé Bowl. Um, and I would encourage you to check it out, even though it is expensive. I think it's kind of worth the money. Okay, finally, we're moving on to the desktops. As I said before, even though it kind of seems obvious to just go for a portable vaporizer, because then you can use it at home or wherever you are, I do think it's always worth having a desktop vaporizer because they're a little bit more powerful and they give you just a little bit easier use. You know, it's plugged in, it's always ready to go. You don't have to charge it up. They are often just harder hitters. So it's worth having a look at them. And I think by far the most commonly known desktop vaporizer, because it's been around the longest, is the Volcano. There are two models. We've got the Volcano Hybrid here. You can also still get the Volcano Classic, which is just very analog, just has a dial on the front, a little knob that you can twist up and down to choose your temperature setting. The Hybrid offers a little bit more functionality. Both the Classic and the Hybrid allow you to inflate what are called vapor balloons by just loading your herb into the chamber here and then popping on one of these balloons and filling it up with vapor like so. And that takes, you know, a few seconds to inflate and then when you're ready, you can just take it off, pop your mouthpiece on, and it's got this clever little valve system. So when you're pushing down the mouthpiece with your lips, you're releasing the vapor. It's a cool idea. Um, it's been around a long time, personally. I'm not a big fan of it. This crinkling bag noise gets old pretty quickly and you have to change the bags and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's not for me, to be honest. So that's why I really like the hybrids, because for the first time it offered you an alternative, which is the whip option. So very much like the balloon, you can just clip the whip on top there, and then you can either have the air blasting the vapor straight into your face, or you can just use the um, power of your own breath to inhale through the whip. Um, it turns the volcano into a great kind of heat on demand, like home vaporizer. Really powerful, flavors great from it. They're built to last, they've got good customer service. It's a German made device. Um, it's pricey, certainly the, the hybrid is very pricey, but it is among the best vaporizers that money can buy. So, you know, you get what you pay for. If you don't want to spend quite as much as the Volcano, then there are some great low cost options out there. And I think one of the best is the V-Tower from Ariser. These are the same guys who made all those Ariser portables, the Solo 2, the Air 2 and the Argo. And the V-Tower is their kind of budget home vaporizer. There's no fan in this. It's totally powered by your own air. Um, but the great thing about it is it's got glass chambers and glass kind of mouthpiece tips, um, glass parts. So a lot of the vapor is traveling through glass. You get that same kind of rich glass flavor that you get from the Arisa portables. And then it has a rubber whip, very similar to the Volcano Hybrid. So you can get these really nice, powerful hits from it, and it doesn't break the bank. It's under a hundred pounds to get the uh, V Tower, which is a, a great option for a low cost home 
vaporizer. There's also the Extreme Q, which is like um, a, an advanced version of the VTOWER, basically. It looks almost exactly the same, as you can see. But the main difference is this does have a fan in it. So you can inflate vapor balloons like you can with the Volcano, but you can also inhale through the whip with the fan on and that just works beautifully. The whip cools the vapor really nicely, but you're still getting this constant flow of vapor into your lungs. And the Extreme Q is still not much more expensive than the V Tower. At the time we're filming this, it's 130 pounds. So another great low cost option for a home vaporizer. Now I'm going to move on to my favorite of the desktop vaporizers, and that's this little beauty, the Vapex Hale Evo. It's still my favorite because it is just absolutely magnificent and it normally comes with a bubbler like this but you can just get it with a dry mouthpiece called the helio it can be used with dry herb and concentrates although not both at the same time but the beauty of the vapexl evo is the purity of the air path because absolutely everything is glass except for these little stainless steel herb baskets you're getting nothing tainting your flavor the heat element is a thermocouple coil that's actually wrapped around this glass tube that runs through the middle of the unit so you're pulling in cool air from the bottom it's heating up as it goes through the glass tube and then it's the hot air that passes through this little mesh basket where the herb sits that vaporizes the oils that are in your herb. And then you can inhale them through water, through one of these beautiful bubblers, or straight through a dry mouthpiece if you want maximum flavor. And you can also use it to vaporize concentrates by use of these little glass kind of test tube looking things that sit down there. And as far as I know, it's the only hot air dabbing device that dabs concentrates through hot air alone. No contact with any preheated surface. It's the hot air that vaporizes the oils. And again, that means incredible flavor, incredible efficiency. It is heat on demand because your herb's only getting heated as you inhale from it. And yes, it takes a while to heat up, rather like the mini vap, it takes about 10 minutes before you're gonna get the best hits. And that is probably the thing that puts me off using it more. But if I'm having like a day sesh or whatever, I'm just gonna sit and watch some movies and be vaping all through the day, then the Evo is the device I'll plug in, turn on and power up and it'll just take me through the day. The flavor is fantastic from the Vapex L Evo. It's quite a thing that it's been around for a number of years and nothing has really come along and beaten it in terms of the quality of the hits you get from it. So absolutely well worth checking out. It's not among the most expensive vaporizers out there anymore either. You can get Evo packages for a reasonable price, you know, in the high 200 pounds or thereabouts, which isn't bad considering the quality of the hits you're gonna get from it. You might have heard of the Silver Surfer or the Da Buddha Vaporizer. These are both made by the same company based in Colorado. And these are excellent home vaporizers. They're powered by these ceramic rod heaters. They heat up really quickly and give really great power without deadening any flavor. And they're whip-based vaporizers. This, this is the Super Surfer, the slightly improved newer version of the Silver Surfer. There's a couple of different kind of configurations of whip connection, but this is the spherical attachment. And it gives you a little bit more control over where the heat is directed into your herbs that sit in this little glass tube here. Again, because a lot of it is glass, you're getting really excellent flavor. It's quite basic temperature control. You just got one of these little dials here and it's the same on the Da Buddha. Um, they're essentially very, very similar vaporizers that are Buddha slightly more affordable, but these are great options for home vaping with power without sacrificing any of that flavor well worth checking them out and in a very similar category is the titanium again this is heated with one of these ceramic rods i've just taken off the little quartz dabbing dish that normally sits there so that you can see that uh, rod the difference with the titanium is that you can actually dab 
and vaporize dry herb at the same time because you can throw your dabs on top and you can have your herb in the little chamber that sits on the whip. So you load your herb into this little um, mouthpiece thing, uh, the sort of wand, and then you attach that onto there and you can just inhale straight through there. Again, it's really, really tasty. You've got the similar sort of dial control to the Silver Surfer and the Da Buddha. It's made by a different company though. And I love the look of it. Like that kind of nice kind of objet d'art kind of look, almost looks like something that you'd have in your home anyway, you know, put it on the side and it's a very kind of unassuming design, quite stylish, something you might find in like Ikea or Habitat, one of those kind of fancy home shops. Um, and yet it really does deliver the goods. You get these really big rips from it, incredible taste. And you get the option of dabbing concentrates as well, which is a, a nice option to have. Finally, we're at the flower pot and I've left this till last because it is the biggest hitter of all the vaporizers that we've talked about today. Home units, portables, home portables, they all kind of bow down in fear when the flower pot comes knocking and it is a beast. So it's not for everyone. Certainly a party piece, maybe. I'm not sure many people can use the flower pot day in, day out as their prime vaporizer. But if you're a medical user who needs high dosage, then this is the device for you. Although the flower pot can also be used perfectly well with small doses. It just kind of encourages you to take bigger doses because the bowl is big and the heat element can take it. It really can deliver the goods. So the way this works is it's a PID um, base, the PID being this kind of control unit here that powers the whole device. Uh, this is actually a double one. You'd normally just get a single PID. And what you do is you select the temperature that the thermocouple goes up to in Fahrenheit on this PID. And it then heats up this kind of heat element here. It's got a thermocouple coil wrapped around a titanium heat element. And there are a number of different heat elements that you can get for the flower pot. At the moment, there's the eater, which is designed just for use with dry herb. And then there's the V-rod, which can be used for dry herb and concentrate and both at the same time. So if you're interested in dabbing concentrate, then that might be the one to go for. Otherwise, the eater is kind of a cheaper package and it works beautifully with dry herb. The way it works is you always have to use a bubbler, a uh, tabletop water tool like the honey here is a perfect option. And you have this bowl here that you load up with your herb. And then when it's reached temperature, you put the heat element over the top of it. And through convection, as you inhale through the bubbler, you're inhaling that vapor, inhaling that hot air over your herb and vaporizing the oils and taking these really quite impressive rips. Of course, you can control the temperature. You can choose how much herb to put in there to determine what kind of rip you're going to get. The flower pot really comes into its own at the higher end of the spectrum in terms of large amounts of herb and high temperature settings. So it is a big hitter. Let me make that clear. A very, very big hitter. But it's built to last. Titanium parts, you know, quite a solid power control base. Um, usually comes with all the accessories that you need, like this kind of stand to hold the heat element when it's not in use. Bear in mind that this is a exposed heat source that isn't particularly protected. So, you know, if you've got kids running around, if you've got pets, you might want to think twice about having something like a flower pot. It's the dry herb equivalent of an email for those of you who are more familiar with dabbing devices. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the flower pot. It's just a little bit too hard hitting for me on day to day usage, um, but it's absolutely worth trying um, you know, for some people, it's going to be their be all and end all. 
And there is a nice kind of aspect to where you can have different bubblers for different situations and get, you know, you can use it with pretty much any bubbler. Um, doesn't have to be any special brand or anything. There are different adapters for all different sizes. Um, so, you know, there's quite a fair amount of customizability in the whole process there. Now, when you're using a vaporizer, maintenance is really important. If you don't keep up the maintenance of your vape, then it can really affect the performance of your vaporizer. And it can actually damage it over time if you don't keep it clean. So there are some basic everyday checks and maintenance tips that you can run on a regular basis. And we're gonna go through those now. You should always brush out your chamber and your mouthpiece after every use. The sooner you do this, the less sticky residue will build up. Residue will cause overheating and it puts strain on your heating element. About once or twice a week, you should also do a more thorough clean. Disassemble your mouthpiece, take any screens out of the chamber and soak all metal or ceramic parts in pure isopropyl alcohol or warm DC clear. Wipe out your chamber with an alcohol wipe or a cotton bud dipped in alcohol, but don't get it too wet. Also, give your vape body a quick wipe all over. You're holding it in your hand all the time and then putting it in your mouth. So it's a great idea to keep it clean. We see a lot of battered vapes that have just been thrown in people's bags with all their other stuff and chucked around or kept in pockets with keys and phones. They just don't stand up well to that kind of treatment. It's always a good idea to get a dedicated carry case for your vape. You can get lockable ones and even smell proof ones that reduce odors. Some vapes even come with their own case included. If you're going to carry spare batteries around with you, you must have a battery case. Most vapes are powered by lithium ion batteries and they can be extremely dangerous if the casing is dented or pierced. Even a small tear in the wrapper can be extremely dangerous. There have been horror stories about batteries spontaneously igniting into flames because they weren't looked after correctly or because a non-standard charger was used. It's very important to check your batteries regularly, keep them in a good solid hard battery case and make sure they're not damaged. If you have a battery that has any damage to it, you should dispose of it safely at your local battery recycling center. If you want your batteries to last a long time, you should keep them charged regularly. Don't leave them uncharged for long periods of time. If you're not going to use your vape for a while, top up your batteries before storing it safely. If your vape has swappable batteries, like the Spirit here, it might be a good idea to invest in an external charger. They trickle charger batteries and they make sure that there's no overcharging and they will definitely make your batteries last longer in the long run. You can also charge up to four batteries at once in a external charger, but make sure you get a good quality one. Don't just go for the cheapest one you can find on Amazon. I'd recommend a brand like Nightcore, certainly something that has the relevant safety certification in your area. Now, AVB, you might have heard about AVB or even ABV, some people call it. It stands for Already Vaped Bud, or some people call it Already Been Vaped. It's the herb that's left after you've vaped. There's usually some goodness left in it still, and it's activated because it's been heated to at least 180 Celsius, so it's been decarboxylated. That means you can eat it or bake with it if you want. You'll find some guidance about this online. When it comes to storing your herbs, there is one hard and fast rule. Just use glass. Honestly, Glass is the best solution for storing your herb. I love these jars because they're glass lined. So they're actually keeping your herbs away from sunlight and heat. 
and it also means the glass is protected if you happen to drop it. They come in a huge range of sizes from this little Chico up to the big Pappy here. And you can use just kind of standard glass jars. You want to make sure it's got quite a good airtight seal on it because that will keep your herb fresh. Um, you can keep glass totally clean. You can It's inert, so it's not going to absorb any of the smells or flavors of different types of herbs. And it's also not going to impart anything to your herbs. Um, it is just the best way to protect your herb. Just keep them away from light and heat, ideally in a jar like this. It's J-Y-A-R-Z, if you're wondering how to find it. Um, but yeah, glass is absolutely the best solution for stirring herbs. As I mentioned before, you might also want to invest in a smell safe or smell proof case for your vape accessories and herbs and concentrates as your vape will develop a smell of its own over time. A lot of cases have odor neutralizers built into them and some of them are also lockable so you can make sure you're being very safe and responsible. You could also get a plug-in odor neutralizer like the neutralizer or a spray like like Oust Odor Eliminator, or even a simple orange-flavoured air freshener like Orange Chronic works quite well. 